welcome my dear student this is my 8th lecture of software engineering the code of software engineering is 1618504 so 8th lecture talks about spiral model spiral model belongs from second unit the name of the second unit is software life cycle model dear student this lecture is prepared based on sbte syllabus for diploma course so now we will start our lecture so this is the content in first we are going to see the definition and introduction of the spiral model then we will see the phases of a spiral model after that we will see the advantages and disadvantages of a spiral model after that we will see the applications of a spiral model and finally we will see the comparison of a spiral model with waterfall model so based on this content today i am going to be take your class online classes so in the introduction part of the spiral model the first point says that this is one of the most important model of the software development life cycle so this is one of the most important model in software development life cycle for the development of software why because a spiral model having feature to support the risk handling second point says that in a spiral model the exact number of loops are unknown that means we are not able to say the exact number of loops because it will vary from project to project dear friends each mo each loop of the spiral model talks about the phase of the software development process here students i am telling one thing each loop of the spiral model talks about the phase of the development software development process and the third point says that this model is proposed by barry bohem in his paper in 1986 so this model is given by barry bohem in 1986 in his paper so he he was the first scientist who has given proposal about the spiral model in his paper so its phase in the spiral model begins with the design goal and in with the client review and progress so this is the introduction part of the spiral model now we will see the definition of spiral model so a spiral model is a combination of waterfall model and iterative model in the previous video lecture i already explain about the waterfall model and the iterative model so it's a combination of a waterfall model and a iterative model next point of the spiral model it's only suitable for or best used for the large project where continuous changes or enhancement will be there that means a spiral model is best for the large project where continuous enhancement of the development of software will occur next point of the spiral model the radius of the spiral model 
talks about the cost and expense of the software project development whereas the angular dimension of the spiral model talks about the progress of the spiral model in current phase that means angular dimension talks about the progress or development of the software and last point of the spiral model we already have know that it's a risk driven process that means in a spiral model we are able to analyze the risk of the dev software so these are the main points which consider as the definition of the water uh, spiral model in sdlc now this is the graphical representation of the spiral model if we see here we have a four quadrant this is quadrant 1 2 3 and 4 the same way here also 1 2 3 4 and each quadrant we have a given a name so actually as i told in the previous slide in a spiral model we are we having a radius and as well as we have a angular dimension so radius talks about the cost and budget of the software development and angular dimension talks about the progress so this graphical model can easily explain and boost up this two points so this graphical representation of a spiral model in two way i have just given here to make you more clear and to it's better for your more clarification now phases of a spiral model so what are the phases of a spiral model we are going to see here now so we have a four quadrant so in this four quadrant we are going to be have a three basic points so first point says that a spiral model each phase of the spiral model is divided into four quadrants as shown in the figure 1 2 3 4 the radius of the spiral at any point represent the cost and budget of the project and the angular dimension of the spiral model talks about the progress of the current phase so these are the three basic points of the spiral model now we will see the four quadrants talks about four phases so the first phase is 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 talks about the planning second phase or the that means second quadrant talks about the risk analysis and third quadrant talks about the engineering that means development and testing of the software product and the fourth phase talks about the review and plan for the next phase so these are the four phases of the spiral model so this four phases it's divided into four quadrant of the spiral model now we will see one by one in detail now so the first phase that means the first quadrant it talks about the objectives determination and identifying alternative solution that means the first quadrant of the spiral model is used to gather the requirement of the customer and then identify the objective of the customer with the help of the analyst team or we can say that with the help of the uh, head of the or the senior member of the team and then we can also find the alternative objective of the customer requirement 
in the first quadrant itself second quadrant talks about the risk analysis that means we are going to be resolve the risk that means we are going to be check out whether if we proceed with this requirement or this objective of the software development then they are going to analyze the risk then they are going to find out the risk and they are also going to check out whether the risk this risk can be resolve it or not if they are bold enough yes we can resolve this risk then we are going to be move for the next quadrant and the second quadrant itself we are going to be give a prototype of our software development to the client or the customer for a review the third phase of the spiral model or the third quadrant of the spiral model talks about the development that means what we have got in the first and the second based on that in the third phase we are going to be uh, do it in the development part that means we are going to be work for the coding and designing in the third quadrant of the spiral model so the in the uh, third quadrant they are going to develop the source code and then we are they are going to verify that through the various testing techniques and methods and at the end of the third phase of the spiral model we are also going to check for the next version of the software whether it is available or not then first fourth phase of the spiral model it talks about the review and plan for the next phase that means in the fourth quadrant of the spiral model where the customer is going to be evaluate the software that means customer is going to be check the prototype or the software for their clarification or for their requirement meets and if everything is smooth and based on the customer meets they are going for the next phase so in the fourth quadrant the is in the spiral spiral model we are also planning for the next phase so dear student we have a four phases in the spiral model the first phase we are going to be collect the uh, customer requirements and find the objective second phase we are going to analyze the risk and resolve the risk and build a simple prototype for the customer and the third phase we are going to develop the software and test the software and in the third phase itself we are going to check out the next version of the software availability and the fourth phase we are going to get the customer evaluation on the project and we are also checking for the next phase planning so these are the four basic phases of the spiral model in sdlc now we will see the advantage of a spiral model so what are the advantage the first advantage is risk handling as i told you being itself a spiral model is one of the most important model in sdlc because it support the feature called risk handling that means this model is able to resolve the risk if it is occur in during the development of the software second point this model is good for the large project fourth point this model is flexibly flexible in nature it means that this model can incorporate changes in between as per the customer requirements or needs the fourth point says that this model try to give the customer satisfaction that means this model having one disadvantage to give the customer satisfaction that means this model provide better understanding with the customer by providing their full satisfaction 
then fifth point of advantage of a spiral model is budget so this model by using this model we can easily find out the approximate budget of the software development and the project at the beginning itself and the last we have a feedback so this model allows the customer to give feedback to the developer for the better development of the software or enhancement of the features and qualities of the software so these are the six basic advantages of a spiral model dear students apart from this six many are are there but i have given six here for you for better understanding now we will see when to use the spiral model so first if we have a software we have a planning to develop the software but we understood that this software having high chances of risk and cost then that time we can choose the spiral model for the software development second point says that when we want to develop the software and our requirements are not clear and we understood that it's make a complex then that time we can better to choose the spiral model for the development of software the third point says that when the project is large and high in budget that means dear students if you want to develop the software or project and you understood that this project is large project and is having a high budget then it's better to go a spiral model for the development of software and the last point but not least it says that when if we when you understood that while development of the project you have a you have a better coordination with the customer and the developer then better to go for the spiral model because in a spiral model allows to incorporate your changes or your idea or your requirement in between the development of the software so this model is helpful for you in that scenario i hope my dear student these four points are clear for you in terms of a spiral model applications now we will see the disadvantage of a spiral model first point as i told you this model is not simple like other model waterfall model this model is little complex in nature so that this model useful for the large project and complex project second point of the disadvantage of spiral model talks about risk analysis that means in this model we developer are mostly depends upon the risk analysis third point says that difficult to manage the time that means in this model developers are not able to decide when to deliver the project to the client why because the client or the customer are giving continuous requirement for the enhancement or upgradation of the or changing of the software so it's difficult to manage the time and give the deadline for the submission of the project so it's difficult to time estimation and the last point is that expensive in nature yes because a spiral model use experts developer and for that they need to pay more for that in terms a spiral model is expensive in nature that means it is not suitable for the small project so these are the four basic points of the spiral 
model comes under disadvantages. Now we will see the strength of the spiral model. First, risk handling. As I told you in the beginning itself, this model having one feature to handle the risk. Second point, it's enable the better cost estimation. That means this model can easily estimate the cost at the beginning itself. And this model is good for the large project and mission critical project. The last point says that allows extensive use of prototypes concept. That means a spiral model is used the concept of the prototypes. That means as I told you in the first quadrant of the spiral model itself, they design a prototype and so to the customer. Now weakness of the spiral model, as I told you, every model having some weakness and a strength. So a spiral model also having some weakness points. So what are the weakness points? We will see one by one here. Now the first weakness points, risk analysis requires high specific expertise. That means this model required expert team to work. So this model also required documentation and it's giving more weightage on the documentation. Then a spiral model go infinitely not beneficial for a small project. As I told you, it is not good for the small project because it's a expensive in nature. Then management and process are more complex. As I told you, time management is very difficult in the spiral model. So management and process are more complex in terms of the spiral model. So these are the four basic weakness point of the spiral model. We may get more than this four, but as for you, I have mentioned four here to just recall and to just get more idea on the spiral model. Now we will see the comparison of a spiral model with waterfall model. So spiral model can easily adopt the changes. That means it is not rigid like waterfall model. Second point risk involvement. Waterfall model having a high risk involvement but whereas spiral model having a low risk involvement because in a spiral model in the second quadrant itself we are able to handle and resolve all the risk. So work method a spiral model works in evolutionary method whereas waterfall model works in sequential method. Adopted by so this model, a spiral model is adopted by the developer, not by the customer like waterfall model. In terms of project, if we compare the waterfall model and the spiral model, then waterfall model is fit for the small project, whereas a spiral model is fit for the large project. So these are the five basic points and difference of the comparison of the waterfall model with respect to the spiral model. Now summary, I hope we have understood about the spiral model in terms of project because this model is mostly used for the large and complex project because in the spiral model we are using expert team to work. In terms of risk handling, waterfall, this spiral model is more safe compared to the any other model like waterfall model. Because in the second quadrant itself, we are going to analyze and resolve the risk in a spiral model. And the last flexibility. So a spiral model is flexible in nature. So the customer can 
incorporate their idea or requirement in between the development phases so these are the summary of the spiral model now reference these are the points and books i have given for your reference so to youtube link i have given for you kindly go to this youtube link and learn and acquire more knowledge about the spiral model and two books i have given for you to just go through you go through these books and collect more idea so these are the reference for you thank you my dear students we will meet in the next video lecture soon thank you